Continuing with web application security, uh, some, uh, well, more detailed examination of, of why uh, it is difficult to uh, protect against attacks and, and uh, the kinds of things that uh, people do or don't do. Um, it, people think, you know, a firewall is is your protection. Well, firewalls uh, don't protect against web attacks because primarily the, the firewall is left open for the web server. Uh, you, you leave the port open. You, uh, people are supposed to uh, access the web server. They're supposed to make requests. Um, so, you know, you've, you've got that. Now, um, if you've got a uh, web server that, well, well, we'll go into some of the things that other things that people do. But anyway, you know, basically you, you leave it open. So a firewall is not going to uh, defend you. And um, it's, it's difficult to defend against uh, web attacks. Um, you are supposed to be able to, the user, the, the person on the other end of the connection, is supposed to be able to make a request. Anytime you can make a request, um, then the system has to start thinking, okay, um, they are requesting uh, a file. Is this a file which should be sent? And when the request to the operating system is coming from system software, the, the web server itself, um, very often the web server should have access to various system files. And, and so, you know, somebody can make a request for, for example, uh, a copy of the password file. Um, and then can mount various types of attacks against that. Um, so, you know, you've, you've got to uh, consider. It's supposed to be open. It's supposed to provide... Uh, this service, how do we tie down the things it's not supposed to do? Um, encryption at the transport layer uh, doesn't help because that is most frequently done with uh, secure sockets layer or transport layer security and uh, that is supposed to be available to other people um, to encrypt the the channel, um, but it doesn't, you know, it just encrypting the channel just means that the attacker has an encrypted channel. Uh, so it's, you know, again, it's, it's now becomes more difficult for your firewall to detect, you know, is there any submissions uh, being sent here that uh, shouldn't be sent? Um, so, you know, encryption is, is working against you in, in this type of instance. Um, most commercial software and web applications will have uh, some kind of an administrative page which is usually open by default and and so you've got to lock that down. Uh, you know make sure that you uh, as they say change all the passwords and, and make sure that you change the permissions um, you know, when it's installed, you have to get into it, but you have to get into it in order to start making changes. So that, you know, the first thing you do, uh, before you connect it to the real world is, is start locking it up and, and make sure that you have, uh, set up access controls that are going to prevent some attacker from uh, just, you know, going right in and, and doing whatever they want with the system. Um, again, uh, many in-house applications are going to uh, have a... a a web administration um, and you know again 
you know, make sure that, that this is, is secure. Make sure that it's not going to be subject to, you know, things as simple as a brute force attack. And brute force attacks are um, difficult to protect against in uh, the web environment because, once again, the, the protocol was intended for a single transaction. It was not meant for a connected transaction. So very often, um, the uh, ability to, you know, lock out after three bad passwords type of thing is not available on uh, web applications because each transaction is a single transaction unless you are tracking IP addresses and, and you know, seeing if you're getting multiple logins or, or login attempts from a single IP address. And what does that do? And of course, you have to leave it open because we are using a web interface as terminal emulation for our remote users and road warriors to uh, try and connect to our home machine, and so we cannot tell what IP address they are going to be calling from. Um, oh, it's, it just, it goes on and on. Um, the authentication process. Uh, again, you know, is, is it going to be uh, subject to a, a brute force attack? Is, is it going to be strong enough to protect what we want? So, all of these, uh, all of these factors of the web application environment, working environment, um, ensure that it's a difficult environment to work in and to secure. So we have to consider what we want. We have to consider. Uh, what uh, is of value behind, you know, in uh, our, our web page? Um, what are we giving people access to? How do we protect them? Um, we, we can set up uh, apparent uh, uh, streaming connections or, or connected sessions. But we're, we're generally going to have to do that with something like cookies or uh, a submission string in uh, every request that identifies it as the same session. We don't want that to be a constant string. We want to be able to ensure that um, it is changed every minute or every second sometimes, depending on how... Uh, uh, significant the how sensitive the the information is uh, so we can you know hash it with with the time maybe or something like that so that we're not using the same uh, you know broadcasting a session identification string that uh, an attacker can pick up and use so you know they, all of these things have to be considered when we are dealing in the web application environment. Uh, what are we using it for? What do we need? How sensitive? All the stuff that goes into our risk analysis right from the beginning.